And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey everybody, I'm Tom Vassell. Today we're taking a look at Coffee Traders, a very big style game about, well, building a coffee and plantations, growing the coffee on that, fulfilling contracts. This game has very little luck in it. It's all about taking actions and it really is a mishmash of a bunch of stuff from action selection to area control to getting resources and selling them to fulfill contracts. Nothing really that new here, but what this game does is it puts it all together in a pretty big giant game. Let me show you. This is a very basic overview of what's going on in the game, but you're trying to get the most victory points. There are different regions on the board, and players can be building both plantations and different buildings in those regions. And at the end of the game, you're going to compare. There's like an area control for each region. Whoever has the most quality value, so let's say purple here has a, you know, these build in here. I have six quality value, so I'm going to win that. Whoever has the most is going to get 16 points, eight points to second most, four points to third most. And then players are going to get various other points um, from different spots on their board. So points essentially are coffee cups. The more buildings that you build here are going to give you victory points. If you get to the end of a row, you get victory points. Players are going to start with these contracts that they're trying to finish by the end of the game. Each of these, they're going to require different amounts of coffee. If you finish those, they give you victory points. You're going to be placing tokens that you get over the course of the game. You're going to get different round tokens of different colors that you're going to be placing here. And if you get to the top, you can get a lot of victory points that way. Over here, and this is a very big part of the game, the Arabic track. If you move up far enough on these, you're going to get victory points. If you have all your tokens to the second row, you get three points. All of them to the third row, you get seven. And then six points for reaching this end space. And then only one person gets to the end farther than that, four more points. And then there's coffee bars over here. There's another place you can sell coffee. It gives you fewer victory points, but it's easy and simple. And then there are milestones down here. These are put out randomly at the beginning of the game. And the first person to do whatever it says on it. So for example, the first person to build a bunch of five warehouses will get 10 points, second eight points, etc. The game takes place over three years. This shows the different phases that happen in each year. You'll keep track of turn order. I'm not showing a two player game here, but uh, there would be a token from each player on that disc. And for that, let's take a look at the player board. The first part of each game is called the work phase. And in the work phase, players are gonna be using these action cubes that they have to take various actions. These, the uh, actions A and B only require one cube, action C requires two, and action D requires one. So you're gonna pick these actions. You have a cube of your own color that can be used once per game to give you a fourth one. But you also have this bonus supply box here, which gives you extra money, an extra cube, or an extra trader slash contractor. You can use two of those things per round. But also, if you use the money, you need to pay it back or you take negative points. So you, if you're going to take money, you better get in something, do enough uh, contracts or whatever to make that money back. So you could have five actions on a turn. And so you're going to put these out. And what these are going to do is they're going to allow you to place plantations on the boards and other things. I'm not going to get too much into it, but when you place a plantation, you're all going to just be putting it out on the board. You'll see in, these, in the first row in each area, only ones can be placed. In the second row, ones and two. In the third row, twos and three size plantations. So level three can only go in that final row. But to get to these plantations, you're going to have to place a donkey. To go to the second plantation, you have to place two. Or if you're lucky enough to get a truck, trucks are hard to get, you can drive all the way around and immediately put a level three plantation out without having to go ahead and get the different donkeys. Remember, these are going to, there are going to be a couple things here. As plantations go on the board, workers are going to have to go out on these plantations. And if there's not enough, you'll have to provide your own. 
zone, and they're also worth those area control points at the end of the game. Sometimes the plantations have extra costs to put them out, and many times they give you bonuses. If I build this one here, for example, I get a, a free donkey. But I also can't build this one, so I built the, the level one in front of it, and this one's gonna cost me an extra two coins at the top. And you can even build farms, which are just basically gonna give you some bonuses at the end of the game, but that's pretty much it. Another action is sending the workers out. Like I said, we need to have workers on these. And in this case, in this particular action, I'm not going to get too much into detail, but basically you get bonuses and benefits if you send them out onto other people's colors besides your own. But these plantations aren't really going to work if you don't get your own, if you don't get the workers out on them. So that's another action. You can spend two cubes to get a donkey. You're basically breeding a donkey. And you can spend one cube just to get some money or to put out a civet cat. Civet cats are amazing because when you place these out here at the end of a round, they're gonna basically give you wild coffee. After taking actions, players have a workers pool here possibly, and you're allowed to put out workers on plantations that don't have anyone in it. And then each plantation without a worker, you gotta pay money. Then you have the trader phase or contractor, and you're going to be using these for a couple things. You're going to be using them to kind of take control of the different trading houses, to take these tokens, which are going to help you out, or possibly you might get some money depending on who take, goes to each one. Or you can use them as contractors and spend resources to get these buildings out on the board. Buildings can give you coffee, or they can give you points at the end of the game. Speaking of coffee, you're going to have coffee of different types. The last column here is wild coffee. That comes from the civet cats. And as you collect this coffee, you'll be using it to spend on these contracts or on those coffee bars. So you can see this one needs eight lavender, five pink, and four of the brown coffee. Now, an interesting thing about this game is warehouses. After you're done with the entire turn, you're going to have to discard coffee, but you can keep each warehouse you have over here lets you keep one of every type. So if I have three warehouses, I can keep up to three of any type of coffee. But I could also put a warehouse here. Now I can only keep two of every coffee, but for green, I can keep unlimited coffee there. Now I mentioned the coffee bars, and this is important because as you pay, for example, if I pay four coffee, brown coffee here, I'm gonna get a victory point at the end of the game, and I get a coin for doing so, but nobody else can go there. And also at the end of the game, there's going to be bonus points for whoever has the most in each column. And also every time you build a plantation or take control of regions, there's different ways you're moving along this Arabic track here. This is a big deal. And most of the time when you move along this track, many times it's because you're getting tokens. There's also an area down below here, which will be filled with different tokens of each type, and if you fulfill one of your contracts, you'll get these tokens, and as I said, you put these tokens on your board here, and the farther up this board you go, you're going to get victory points. Now, hopefully that doesn't dissuade you from the game. That's not a great rules teach, because there's a lot going on, but what the game does is it kind of walks you through it. Again, there's three rounds. Here, you're taking actions, mostly getting plantations out on the board. Then you're deciding which of these buildings to build and where you can build them, because each spot on the board can only hold certain types of buildings. Sometimes they give you benefits putting them out. Sometimes it's just for that area control at the end. Then you're going to be harvesting from each of your plantations. It's going to be bringing coffee in as you get that coffee. And then you're using that to fulfill contracts or the coffee bars. And then you go back to the beginning. But there's all sorts of bonuses. You can see there's bonuses over here on the side that you'll get if you fulfill two contracts that are next to each other. There's bonuses for fulfilling the contract, like fulfilling this one can give you a truck if you want to, or a free building. Doing the last of a row here gives you four victory points. So you're gonna be putting all that together and trying to figure it out so that after three years, you can get the most points and win. Folks, there's no question the components for this game are just both gorgeous and overwhelming. These are all the components for a color. Like, look, this is all the stuff for one person. Now, what I do like is that on the boards themselves, so I'm like, okay, I'm starting the game. Well, this shows me, I put three cubes here. This shows me three money and one donkey go here. And this shows me what goes in the bonus supply. And this shows me what buildings go in each spot. So I like that a lot. 
I think the board is also very colorful. It looks pretty. There's definitely a lot going on, but I was able to walk through the rule book and understand everything about how the game plays, except the rule book was not clear at all on how the bonus supply section got refilled. I had to go online and read and look for a while before I figured that one out. Um, but basically it just gets refilled every turn and you can only do two things and the other things come back for free, but the money you have to repay or you can lose VUKU amounts of points. But other than that one rule snag, I understood the rest of this game and the rules were really well done. They even took into account questions that might be asked. It's a gorgeous looking game. Anyone who says that uh, Euro games have to look boring has never met Capstone. <laughs> There is a lot going on in this game. So there are parts of the game that I really, really like. I like the look of it. I mean, there's no question. I like having these plantations all over the place. One of the things I thought was neat is that level one plantations are thinner than level two, which are thinner than level three. The, the thicker blocks, and I've seen this in a game or two before, but it works really well here. And then the bright colors, and then the coffee colors are pretty bright. The whole thing is like a rainbow splashing across your board. Now this does take up a lot of room. Each of the player boards itself folds up into this general ledger. That's pretty neat. But this is not a small player board in front of you. So you have four of these at the table. I play with four and it barely fits on the table with four. And I have a, a gaming table. Um, with five, I've not played it with five and I would not for also, I almost never play a big Euro game with five. It takes too long, and I really feel like this one will. A four-player game here, it says in the box is two hours. I feel like that's a little, you're, you're making really fast moves to do two hours. It's closer to two and a half, three hours, but it's a big involved game, so I don't begrudge it that time, but five feels like it would go too long. But I love the splash of color. I think the theming works. You have plantations, you need to get workers on them. They get you these different kinds of coffee. There's even theming about how the, how the cats make coffee. I never knew this. There were some other people at the table were like, oh yeah, of course, the civic coffee. And I was like, oh, the civic cats. Uh, I did not know that, but that was kind of neat how to learn about that. And now I'll never drink that coffee. But you know, that, I thought the theme worked really well. You need donkeys to move out to the other plantations or a truck can get you there faster. So all that flows together smoothly. So what am I not thrilled about? Well, it's a lot going on. You really are playing multiple games here. I mean, there's the area control game, which it's easy to forget exists until the end of the game. You're like, oh, that's right. I'm trying to get these points from area control. There's the moving on the Arabic track, doing different things. There is the, what am I going to build? Fulfilling the contracts. That's the most basic thing, that, right? The way you understand. I need to build these plantations so I can get this coffee the amount of coffee produced at a plantation is a certain amount that's then split between people, depending on whether you took shares in it or not. And, there, and I feel like a lot of this is going to be overwhelming for people. I wasn't tremendously overwhelmed by it, but there was a couple things. I didn't like that whole bonus action thing, despite it not being the, spelled clearly in the rules. I just It just felt like a clunky rule. Like you have three things. You can use two of them each round but only two, and then the money has to be repaid or you lose victory points. I'm like, can I just have extra things to do instead of having this weird bonus action? And I get that they're trying to create angst of, I need the money, but I was always afraid to take the money and I just took the extra worker and extra cube every turn. Uh, and I felt like that, that just, that didn't sit smoothly with me. Also, on the contract bonus, when you finish a contract, you get a random color piece there that little bit of randomness can really make a difference because sometimes you're like, I'm finishing a contract, someone else took a tile before me, now the tile I got is the same color as one I already have, and the game has a, a, another slightly clunky rule about if you get two different piles of the same color, you can take one of each and make a third. It's a weird rule. But moving up that track is important. And so there's a lot of important things in this game, and I feel like there's just a few smudgy little rules around the outside, which lessen the experience a bit. It also is a game that really is like, hey, analysis paralysis, here we go! Or, I'm sorry, here we wait quietly while you take your turn. Do I still like the game? Yes. It is a good game. 
Do I recommend a game? Yes, but you need to know what you're getting into. This is a big, over-the-top game. I love the way the warehouses work. That's unique. I like the different buildings. I like the choice between give me some coffee now or give me points at the end of the game. Get that truck and use it or get donkeys. By the way, spending two action cubes to produce a donkey seems like a really terrible thing to do. And I know the game's making you do it, but <sighs> this one's a toss-up for me because I like the game, but I don't know how often I want to play it. The game has a lot going on, but you don't take a tremendously huge amount of options. There's, you're very much working on your own area, but you are definitely involved with everybody else, both for area control, racing up the Arabic tracks, um, putting plantation out where I wanted to put one, fighting to see who has control of the different coffee houses. I'm not involved, I'm not getting any coffee, but I get some money. There is this constant, I thought about what everybody was doing all the time. So I didn't have a ton of actions, which I'd be like, ah, eh, it's not so great, but I'm interested in everybody else's actions, which is good. So at the end of the day, I'm going to say Dice Tower Proof for me. I like it, it's about the lowest seven I can give it, because again, I don't know how often I'm gonna come back to it. And there are games that are of this ilk, economic big games like Brass, which I, was, I wasn't a huge fan of. This one, I, I, I am, and I do like it a lot. I think it looks like it's best. There's a special rules if you play it with two. I haven't done that, but a nice three-player game. Four players, not bad. Like I said, I won't touch five. And it feels unique and interesting, and it, for me, it's kind of a showcase when someone goes, we don't need color in our games. We don't need plastic miniatures to make our games look good. No one's asking for plastic miniatures. We're asking that you make a game look good. This makes the game look good. And if you like the theme of coffee, I think that's going to be something that brings you into it also. Hopefully this gives you some idea of whether you will enjoy this game or not. There's a lot going on, but I think at the end of the day, it's worth it. Little minor problems I have with it that keep it from becoming great, in my opinion. But they may not bother you. It's definitely one that if you're interested in, I might see if I can find a way to try it before getting it, because it's not a small game. But... When you do get it, you're going to be amazed at what a masterpiece, or at least how it looks. And it plays well, too. I'm Tom Vassell. We'll see you next time. Dice Tower Judgment approved!